Hey y'all, welcome back. Tonight's homework is all about logarithm properties and we talked today in class about how they're all related to the exponent properties that we studied in the last unit. So this first section is just asking us to use the change of base formula, which is what allows us to change this base right here to anything we want. And so basically we just need to write these as a fraction using the, the required base. This one says base seven. So we're gonna write this as log base seven of 16 divided by log base seven of five. Now, in general, the way that you're gonna change the base using this change of base formula is you're gonna write it like a fraction like this. You'll use the base that it's requesting here on both the numerator and the denominator. And then the original argument, like what's inside the parentheses, is gonna go inside the argument of the numerator, whereas the original base goes in the argument of the denominator. And so now we've converted this expression to an expression that has log base seven. For number two, we'll do basically the same thing. The only real difference here is that it's asking us to use the common log. So it's not explicitly telling us what base it is. Like in number one, it told us base seven. So you have to know that the common log is base 10. This is where we write a logarithm uh, with no base explicitly stated. And so you just write log, okay? You don't have to write 10. Um, just write log, yeah, that's it. So this would be log of 47 divided by log of four. And this is assumed to be base 10. So yeah, that's number two. Number three says express log base three of 14 using the natural log. So the natural log is where our base is Euler's number E, okay? It's about 2.71, but it's an irrational number like pi or root two, so we're just gonna leave it as E. Now, these are our two special bases. Otherwise, every other base, you're actually gonna write the number down here in the base, but if it's Euler's number or it's 10, you're gonna write it in kind of a special way. So if it's 10, you don't write the base, but if it's Euler's number E, we're gonna use ln for natural log, and that is basically the same thing as saying log base e. So here we have the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of three. Number four says express the natural log of x using base two. So we're gonna use base two here. So this is gonna equal log base two of x divided by log base, and then although we don't see the base explicitly written here, we know that if it says natural log, the base is E. So log base two of E. Number five says express log of 11 using the natural log. So this is actually doing, we're, we're gonna use the common log and the natural log in this problem. Uh, so the natural log is that ln, uh, it's backwards. Um, we've talked about in class why that is, but yeah, the ln of 11, the natural log of 11 or log base E of 11 divided by log base E or the natural log of 10. And just to clarify, this 10 is coming from the base of the original function. It's not written there, but when it's not written there, we assume it to be 10. Number six says, express the natural log of 33 using the common log. So this is kind of going um, from, yeah, this is going from the natural log to the common log rather than number five, which is the other way around. So we're gonna write this as log of 33 divided by log of Euler's number E. So yeah, that's using the, uh, the uh, change of base formula. Now this formula was really useful back in the day um, before our calculators that we used in school could allow you to input any base. So like if I wanted to evaluate log base five of 16 in the calculator, uh, back in the day, I would have to rewrite it like this so that I could actually do it. I would, and I would pick either log or natural log. 
Um, nowadays, with the newer calculators, you can actually put any base you want there. So that particular use for this change of base formula is kind of obsolete at this point. However, knowing how to do this um, is important for solving certain kinds of equations. Uh, we're, we're not really quite there yet in terms of sol solving equations with logarithms, but sometimes you'll have multiple logarithms in the same equation that have different bases and in order to solve it you need to convert them all to be the same base so um, even though that first reason I said uh, is not really used anymore for this change of base formula the uh, uh, solving equations it still it still has a, a use so for number seven we've got log base 5 of 25 X and it says expand the logarithmic expression as a sum difference or constant multiple of logarithms so we want to use those product and quotient properties and we might even use the power property here and there to expand this out uh, let's go ahead and do that so this is going to be log of uh, log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 Oh, not of pi, typo, uh, log base 5 of x. So this is using the product property, and I encourage you to go back to our notes from today to see how I get from here to here. But basically, if you've got a product inside the parentheses, you can split that up and put each factor in its own logarithm as long as the base is the same, and add those two logarithms together. We could do something similar with number 8 as our first step. We can rewrite this as the natural logarithm of 4 plus the natural logarithm of x squared. And although this doesn't really do much now, later on it will be helpful to know how this works. But we also want to get rid of this exponent out of the, the parentheses. And we use the power property to do that. And so we can rewrite this as the natural log of 4 plus 2 times the natural log of x. Basically, what the power property says is that if your argument has an exponent, you can rewrite that logarithm and move that exponent down to be the coefficient of the logarithm itself. Uh, in class, we talked about why that's true, and I don't think that's super obvious or intuitive, but if you think about the product property, um, you can, we showed in class how you can generalize that to come up with this power property. So really, the power property is just the, the product property in disguise. Because uh, you could think about this as being like um, x times x, right? And if you think about this as x times x, you can write this as natural log of x plus natural log of x, uh, which is 2 natural log of x. Number 9 uh, has a uh, quotient here. So we've got division here, and we want to use that quotient property. So we can split it up just like we did with the, power prop or the product property, uh, with the only real difference here being that we are going to be subtracting instead of adding like we did up here. So this is just going to equal log of x minus log of 2. For number 10, we're going to use a combination of both the quotient property and the power property. So it's kind of like number 8. Um, but first we'll use that quotient property, and so this is going to equal natural log of 3 minus the natural log of z to the third power, or z cubed. And then just like we did in number 8, we're going to use the power property to bring that exponent down to be the coefficient of that logarithm. So we have the natural logarithm of 3 minus 3 times the natural logarithm of z. Number 11, we're going to use actually all three of those properties here. I'll start by using the quotient property and split this up into a difference. So uh, log base 2... Let me do, give me that log base too. Come on. Why is it not? Don't understand here. There we go. Log base two of three y minus. Maybe I'll just copy this for to make this go a little faster. Log base two of x to the fourth. Now, in each set of parentheses here, you can see that we can split this up a little bit more. We can expand a little further. For that, this first logarithm, we can use the product property to split up those two factors. And so we get log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of y. Then with the second logarithm over here, uh, we can move this exponent down to be a, a, a coefficient for the same reasons we talked about earlier. Uh, again, this is really just the product property um, 
generalized to exponents. So 4 times log base 2 of x. And it doesn't look like we have any like terms or anything to combine, so that's going to be our final answer. Number 12 is, well, it's pretty much the same thing here. Okay, so we've got the quotient property, the product property, uh, no power properties on this one because I don't see any exponents. So first we'll use the quotient property and rewrite this as log of AB minus log of CD. And then we'll use the product property to write this as log of A plus log of B. Now be very careful in this next one. We're subtracting this whole logarithm. So we need to subtract each of these uh, two terms that we'll get once we split this up. I think maybe just to make it more obvious, I'll put this whole thing in brackets. And so we have log of C plus log of D. But since we're subtracting all of that, that minus sign is going to get distributed, kind of like distributing a negative 1 to both of those terms over on the right side. So we're going to subtract this and subtract that. So this is actually going to be uh, log A plus log B minus log C minus log D. Now if you want to kind of skip over this whole bracket situation, just know that if you're trying to expand this out, every factor that you have in the denominator is going to end up being in a negative logarithm here. Um, and every factor that's in the numerator will end up being in a positive logarithm. So that's why we see like log A is positive, log B is positive, log C is negative, and log D is negative. And that's going to be true. You could check that like with number 11, you see that the 3 and the Y are both in positive logarithms, uh, but the X of the fourth was in a negative one. So that could be a little shortcut if you kind of understand what I just said that there. Otherwise, you can just work it out step by step and, and really get to the same place. In this next section, we're, we're going the opposite direction. So these are logarithmic expressions um, that are expanded, and we want to combine them together. And this is what you'll do more often than not uh, in the future. Uh, when we're solving equations, usually you are going to be con condensing the expression and simplifying expressions uh, to be able to solve. So what we're about to do in this section is going to be a little bit more relevant later on than um, expanding up here. But I think it's important to be able to go both directions uh, to make sure you really understand what the properties are. So number 13, we want to combine these, and we'll do that using the quotient property. We'll get log base 8. Oh, whoa, whoa, I don't want all that. <laughs> wow. Okay, log base. Okay, I was having this problem earlier. I don't know why it gets off of there. Log base 8 of 54 over 2. And if they, these were variables, I'd just be done here. But since I can actually divide 5, 54 by 2, I might as well go ahead and do that. Uh, it's going to be 27. All right? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. Uh, yeah, it should be 27. And 27 is not a power of 8, so we'll just leave it like that. 14, we will use the product property. And so we'll rewrite this as the natural log of, and since we'll have parentheses inside here, I'm going to use brackets, x times x plus 3. You don't necessarily have to use brackets. You could just put parentheses here too. But I think it just makes it clearer what open grouping symbols match up with the closed ones. In other words, like I want to make sure that this parenthesis, well, I can't just, for some reason I can't just highlight that, but I want to make sure this parenthesis matches up with this parenthesis and that this bracket matches up with this bracket. It's a lot more obvious if you use different symbols than if you just use parentheses everywhere. So if I multiply those together, I do get the natural log of x squared, okay, or, or it's all going to disappear. The natural log of x squared plus 3x. And now that we only have one set of grouping symbols, I, that's why I'm reverting back to the parentheses. Number 15. Kind of a similar problem to number 14. However, we have this coefficient here, and we can't combine them unless the coefficients are both 1. So what we have to do is use the power property to rewrite this as log of x squared and log of y to the fourth. So we, we utilize that power property when we were expanding these uh, logarithmic expressions like, um, like over here. 
right, where we, we put this exponent of 3 out to the front. Well, now we're doing the opposite and taking that coefficient and, and moving it up to be the exponent. Uh, from here, we can now use the product property, and so we can combine them using multiplication here. Um, I guess there's no parentheses here, so x squared times y to the fourth. You don't really need to put that dot there. I'm only doing that to make this a little easier to read, but there you go. Number 16, it's going to be just like number 15, except we've got a factor in here, or we've got a product rather. We've got two factors. We've got one product. So when we square this, we've got to make sure to square both of these. Okay. We're going to start by using that power property for this log base 8. Uh, and we have log base 8 of 5z squared. Now this whole thing is being squared. So I guess I will need brackets after all. Um, and I'll come back and I'll, I'll square that on the next step. Minus log base 8 of y to the seventh. So yeah, let's go ahead and simplify that first logarithm. 5 squared is 25 and z squared is just z squared. So this should be 25z squared. Get rid of all the rest of the stuff. Now I can combine this using the quotient property. So I get log base 8 of, and I'm going to have a big fraction here, 25z squared over y to the seventh. I do want to keep an eye out for anything potentially canceling or simplifying. It doesn't look like I have any like terms or fractions I can simplify or reduce, so that's just going to be our answer. Number 17. We're gonna, I'm actually gonna do this uh, in several steps here. First, I'll use that power property. Another log base, eight. what's up with all the log base eights? I don't know why so many of these problems have that. Not that it's that big a deal, it's just kind of weird how <laughs> base eight's all over the place. Okay, so anyway, yeah, we have log base eight of x. There's no exponents on that one. But on the next one, we have uh, log base eight of y squared. And then on the last one, we have log base 8 of z cubed. Now I'm just going to combine two of these at a time because they are different signs. But basically, we're going to multiply the x by the y squared, and then we're going to divide by the z cubed. But like I said, I'll just do two, two, uh, uh, one step at a time here. So I'll do this in two separate steps. So first, I'll combine these two. Whenever you're adding two logarithms with the same base, you can combine them with the product property and write this as x, y squared. And then you can use the quotient property to combine these last two logarithms. So we can use uh, the quotient property to do that. And so inside here we want x, y squared divided by z cubed. For number 18, you know what, let's back up a second for number 17. Earlier had, we, we had said that if we look at like number 12, for instance, if we try to expand this, all of the factors that are in the numerator are going to end up in positive logarithms, and all of the factors in the denominator end up in negative logarithms. And if we look back at the problem we just did, we can see that that sure enough happened. We had a positive logarithm, so x is in the numerator. We had a, another positive logarithm, so y squared was in the numerator. And then we had this negative logarithm with z cubed, and so that ended up in the denominator. And if you uh, start to put that together, and I think I'll use that on this next problem, it does make the whole problem go a little faster, because then you're just looking at positives and negatives, and you're not having to worry about doing this in separate steps. So anyway, for 18, let's first use the power property, and then we'll try to see if we can't just go straight to the answer. So we've got log base 3 of x cubed minus lo oh, okay. <laughs> log base 3 of y to the fourth minus log base 3 of z to the fourth. So notice how they're all the same base, right? They're all base 3. 
And so I think I'm gonna, tr gonna try to just go straight to the answer here and say log base three of x cubed, that's a positive logarithm, so that's gonna end up in the numerator, divided by y to the fourth, z to the fourth. Okay, both of these are negative logarithms, so I know their arguments are gonna end up in the denominator. It's kind of a nice little shortcut there, I kind of like that. All right, number 19. Um, we're going to use the product property, and it looks like we're going to have to do some multiplication of polynomial uh, binomials here. Not a huge deal, but just be on the lookout for this. We've got natural log of x plus one times x minus one, and actually, this is going to you know when we have a plus b a minus b, it'll end up as a difference of two squares. Um, when I multiply this together, and you can do that with the box method or really just the distributive property. It's kind of small, so you could just distribute the x and then distribute the one. And if you do that, you get x squared minus 1. If you're wondering where the other terms went, x times negative 1 is negative x, and then x times 1 is positive x. So those two linear terms cancel each other out. Or they sum to 0. It's <laughs> another way to put it. Number 20. We've got, is that our last problem? Yeah, number 20 is our last one. So let's go ahead and knock this out. We've got the natural log, and we're going to use the power property first, so nothing's going to happen with these first two logarithms, but for that third one, which is a negative one, so we know that the argument will end up in the denominator, we've got natural log of x minus 5 squared. We might have to divide that. Oh, you know what? This is going to can't. Okay, so we actually we got some good stuff happening here. Okay, so let's go to the fraction now. We're going to use that uh, product and quotient property at once. We've got x in the numerator, x plus 5 in the numerator. Both of those are being multiplied because they're, the logarithms are being added. And then since we're subtracting this one, everything that we see in the argument here, this x squared, I'm sorry, x minus 5 squared, all that is going to end up in the denominator. Now notice how... Um, well, uh, well, I actually, I take that back. I guess we're, we're basically done here, except for multiplying everything out. So x times x plus 5, if I distribute that x, I thought, thought I'd be clever and just copy and paste this, but there we go. Um, if we distribute this out, we get x squared plus 5x. And then the, in the denominator, if we square this out, x minus 5 squared would be x squared minus 10x plus 25. I don't think there's really anything else we can do. It looks like we might be able to cancel something because look at all these multiples of 5. But if you look back at the factors, really there's nothing that cancels out here, unfortunately. So this is just going to be our answer. And that about does it for tonight's homework. As always... Please reach out if you have any questions, but other than that, you'll have a great day, and I'll see you next time.